Hey you, this is Jasim from Codeband and in this video we are gonna be building a weather application in Django. So we'll be starting right from scratch. So if you haven't subscribed my channel yet, please do subscribe my channel and click the bell icon near to it. So without any further, let's jump right into it. All right, guys, so this is what we are going to be building at the end. So if we just type in the city, so for example, if I type in like New York and submit, then it will give you the temperature or the weather conditions in New York. It will give you the region, it will give you the uh, the current day and time, uh, the current temperature in Celsius. And if you could, of course, get the Fahrenheit as well, it will also show you the status like clear or thunderstorm or something else. And this is basically it now if we search for something like Delhi I'll also give you that as well so it's pretty working now uh, this one is not very stylish very uh, which in the sense I haven't done much styling here you could of course do more styling and makes this look better so uh, the important thing here is getting this data get, getting the weather conditions of a particular city so that's the important thing here if you get the data you could of course style it in uh, the way you would expect to do so uh, all right let's uh, start to build this web application so um, in the desktop itself so i'm in the in my desktop we'll just create a new folder for the project so i'll call this as a web uh, uh, i'm sorry weather project so weather project there now inside I, i'll just uh, go inside the uh, weather project so i'll just take my cmd here my cmd is here and i'll just cd uh, my desktop and cd weather project so I'm inside that now the first thing I'm gonna be doing is virtual env so I'll just create a virtual env so virtual env I'll call this as venv so I'll just create that virtual environment for me alright that went fine now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is activating that virtual environment so if I just look in in the directory itself you can see the ven folder there so I'll just activate it by saying call ven slash scripts slash activate now my virtual environment is activated now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'll just create a new project so I'll just say Django admin uh, start project now the project name I'll just stick with uh, weather app so that's running now that's okay now if I go there again I can see that weather app there now I'll just move into that weather app directory I'll just open my PyCharm from here now this might not work for you if you haven't set the path now I'm using PyCharm you could of course use VS code or any editor of your choice so I'll just open this folder this weather app folder in my PyCharm so I'll just click enter and it will just open my PyCharm all right guys so my PyCharm is loaded now the first thing I'm gonna be doing is setting the interpreter so uh, you might not need to have to do this one in your application if you're using another code editor you don't have to do this one so I'll just do in my PyCharm project interpreter now I'll just add a new interpreter there so the, uh, I'll just select existing environment now I'll select my virtual environment that we have just created so I'll just copy the path from here so this one um, I'll just copy this path in there I'll just paste that path here now in here in the venv scripts uh, python.exe just select that click ok ok and it'll done that interpreter for you so that's done now uh, I already told you you don't have to do it if you're using any other uh, code editors you don't have to do this stuff now that's perfect now we'll start uh, making the application so uh, the first thing I'm gonna be making is I'm making a new application so python manage.py startup and I'll name this application to be core now the name is up to you you could of course name anything so yeah it says could anymore Django I'm sorry for that I haven't installed Django in my virtual environment so first things first pip install Django yeah, that's done now I'll just make that app there startup core now it gives me that application there so uh, if you look into the weather app you can see that core there now the first thing is to add that app in settings.py 
installed app section so I'll just go to installed apps and I'll just add core there so that's done now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is setting up the URL so we just have one URL the home uh, page itself the slash path so we'll first set up that in the root weather app uh, application so in the urls.py I'll just uh, include so the empty path uh, I'll just include the uh, core dot URL so if anything comes in this manner so it'll just include that core dot URLs there so I'll just um, make a new uh, before moving to that I'll just um, import this include here so path include now I'll make the, in the core directory I'll make a urls dot py file so I'll just right click this one a new and I'll just say urls dot py now that's done I'll just copy and paste the same format and I'll just paste there now I'll just get rid of this admins and all we just need the path import so I'll just get rid of that we don't need the include now in here if that path comes in if, if in the sense if the if it is home page so we'll go to a, a function we'll write a function for example we'll name it as home and I'll provide an optional argument to be home as well so that's perfect now in the views.py we'll just create that function so def home which will get that request now for the time being I'll just return a render uh, I'll just return maybe HTTP response so that we can just check if everything is working fine so I'll just say hello world and if I run my, I'll just import this HTTP response up at the top now I'll just run the server so python manage dot py run server I believe I misspelled that Uh, name views is not defined you know I, that's because we haven't imported that view so I'll just say from dot import views and I believe that's perfect now yeah if we go to that URL itself we could of course uh, find that hello world there so that's working totally perfect now the next thing we are going to be doing is just uh, building this template right so it's very simple we'll just uh, go from scratch so what I'm gonna be doing is I'll just instead of returning HTTP response I'll just render request now the template is I'll just make uh, a core in the core directory I'll just say home.html and that's it now we'll make in the core directory we'll just make some folders so in the templates folder in the core folder we'll make home.html so that's perfect now uh, uh, in the home.html I'll just uh, pick up the boilerplate by saying uh, exclamation mark and clicking tab I'll get that boilerplate I'll just say weather application or weather app now the first thing we want to have is this uh, find the weather so I'll just say uh, h1 find the weather now the next thing we want to do is a form so I'll just say form and we don't actually need the action because the uh, if we didn't provide the action the action will be to the same page itself so it'll just uh, uh, give you the same uh, home function it will just come into this home function and we'll just uh, do we'll just do the logic in a minute so uh, we'll stick with that form tag now inside the form tag we'll just specify the method to be get get method now in here I'll just say I'm sorry for that I'll just say input now input call and text will give you input type equal to text now the name I'll provide it as city so being it is city now the IED being city and I'll just say placeholder uh, to be a city now the next thing uh, I'm missing is a label so I'll just say label and the four is city now I'll not mention in label because we just need that placeholder there so that's okay now the next thing is a submit button so I'll just say input call and uh, submit so submit which will give you that submit button the value to be submit now that's it I believe yeah that's it now this logic will be uh, doing after we fetch the data so uh, if we look into the server there and refresh you can see that it's looking uh, a bit uh, odd looking one now we'll just do some styling there so I'll just wrap um, everything inside a div so live with uh, uh, with an ID of main so hash main 
and I'll just wrap uh, every thing everything there into that div there so that's perfect now uh, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be doing an inline uh, not inline styling with this style tag I'm not I'm, I'm sorry for that I'm doing it the style in the style tag without external CSS because we we only have a little bit of code here right so I'll first take the main tag and uh, or I'll just say uh, the star so that everything is applicable uh, to that entire document so we'll just say margin we don't need margin to be zero and the phone family uh, I'll stick with this one the default one now you could of course use any one that's up to you I'll just stick with that and yeah the box sizing to be border box so that the padding is contained in inside that division itself and the border too so that's perfect now uh, the hash main I will just uh, provide the text align to be center so that everything is in the center and I'll just say give a padding top of uh, maybe a 50 pixel so if we look back into the code you can see that it's look much better so the next thing is um, uh, aligning these things there so uh, what I'm going to be doing is um, I'll put a BR tag here so that there is some break between those things now uh, the input type so input uh, I'll just fetch that uh, type is equal to uh, the type being the text right so the one with the type text I'll fetch that there now we'll provide something like a width so width to be uh, let me say 30 30 percentage now uh, some padding uh, 10 pairs 10 pixel now a border to be a 2 pixel solid black now if we save that yeah we got a little bit nice there now the next thing is submit button so I'll just uh, fetch this one again I'll just copy and paste that and I'll input type equal to submit now the width again 30 percentage padding 10 now the same I believe it's the same setting right uh, except the uh, kind of uh, border color will provide so I'll just provide a margin bottom so that there is some spacing between uh, those two uh, input field the input field and the submit button and uh, yeah we'll just make the background color of that button to be black and the color to be white so that's perfect now we'll just provide some margin between the input field and the heading so uh, I'll just say margin top there maybe margin top I'm sorry for that margin uh, top so again I'll put a 10 pixel there yeah that's perfect now I'll just stick with 20 pixel and the overall padding top to be a hundred so that yeah that's perfect it's looking much like this one so uh, I'll, I'll just make the um, uh, cursor pointer and so that this is uh, that cur we got that cursor there to be pointer now the next thing uh, is I'll just transform the text to be uppercase so if I save that that's looking perfect now this is all about the styling now we'll just write the logic so um, it is a get request so uh, in the views.py we'll first check uh, that if uh, city in request dot get which means if we submit the form if we submit the form then the uh, method is get rec get and in the uh, all the uh, attributes in that get per, uh, get request such as the city here will will be stored in the request dot get here so if there is something known as city in request dot get which means if we submitted the form then we actually want to fetch that weather data right so we'll just uh, comment a thing there fetch uh, weather data now uh, I'll just say pass now this is where we want to write the logic right so uh, actually we are gonna be we, we are not gonna be using any sort of API's for fetching the weather data because um, the actual way of doing it is through the API there are, there are a couple of API open API's uh, I'll, I'll just show you at the end of this video what are the available uh, providers for that API but what we will be doing is we'll be just scraping the data from Google itself so uh, if you just uh, go to let me uh, take a guest tab here and if I just say uh, weather 
uh, in I'm sorry for the spelling weather in uh, let me say New York if I search for that you can see that we get the data here now we'll just scrape this data from from this site itself so uh, the the URL you can see that if we get rid of these all this stuff this is the basic URL if we just search that we got that uh, weather conditions there so this is the URL we are gonna be scraping now you can see that uh, the, the spaces here so if we just type in New York then there's no spacing instead we have this plus sign here so we'll encode that URL so that's some things to note now in order to scrape the data we need uh, some uh, third-party libraries such as our request and the beautiful soup now we'll just install and I'll say what it is in a moment so pip install request now request is nothing but a very popular library to actually get the uh, data from a site so uh, for instance we want to fetch this web page right in here by going uh, by making a request to this URL it'll just give you the response of HTML content here so in, for that purpose we need a request now the second one is to actually scrape the data from this web page so in order to do that we have a cool uh, extension or cool package in uh, python called beautiful beautiful soup so we'll use this one uh, so uh, uh, this is official documentation I'll put the link in the description so that you can refer now we'll just pip install this one pip install beautiful soup 4 I'll just click enter there now it'll just actually install that beautiful beautiful soup for me now we'll actually start to implement the logic now one thing to you you have to keep in mind that Google doesn't allow you to access this uh, this website or just fetch this data programmatically so we don't uh, have access to actually the web page using this uh, script here we, we cannot access that Google will automatically block that request there so we'll make uh, something like uh, we'll pretend to be a, a good user a legitimate user by saying we are uh, uh, directly coming from a browser we are just uh, browsing uh, this one we act like that so in order to get around that I, and I have put a link in the description section of this one where you can find something like request headers we'll just uh, set some uh, user agent and language so that Google doesn't block our requests we pretend to be a Mozilla or a, a, a kind of browser and that will do the trick so I'll just copy and paste this one here and I'll just paste there so uh, we'll just paste that in here user agent language and all and uh, what we are going to be doing is first we'll make a request to this URL this in the sense this URL and we'll then scrape the data so uh, we'll make a separate function so I'll just say def get HTML content to get that HTML content behind uh, this URL so this one to get this content so uh, uh, I'll, make, I'll, I'll just copy and paste all these stuff into that function that separate function so that it doesn't look much crammed there so in here uh, I'll, I'll first import the request now you could import at the top or here no issues with that so uh, what this is doing is uh, it sets some headers like user agent and language then we'll make a session this is request library dot session now this is a session object now we'll set the headers to be uh, the user agent accept language and all those steps now with that being said we have set all those headers now we'll just make the request itself so we'll say an HTML content variable is equal to the session object dot get get in the sense it is a get request to which URL that's next question so the URL is this one so I'll just copy that URL there I'll just paste that in now this is F string so that it, it it makes much easier to format this one because actually this New York is very explicit we want whatever the user typed in so whatever the user typed in will be in this city right so this one will will be in this request dot get dot city here so I'll just first fetch whatever the user entered so I'll just say city is equal to request dot get and in here I'll just say dot get that is a method in that dictionary now the key here is city so the key in the sense is the name here this one so I'll just say city there 
Now the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'll just pass that city to this function to this HTML content so that we can replace that in here, right? So I'll just say uh, the um, uh, get HTML content the function name, and we'll just pass in that city there. So I'll just uh, say city here. I'll just receive that city there. Now in here, what we are gonna be doing is instead of this New York, uh, we'll just replace that with the city. So the, after the plus, we'll just uh, make uh, this curly braces here, and we'll just say city. Now there is an issue here because uh, this, if we just uh, uh, type in New York into uh, this field here, if we just type in New York, the uh, here the difference is the space, right? So, but in the actual URL, that is plus. So we need to uh, make all the spaces to be plus, right? So we'll just make that first there. So before uh, uh, making the request, I'll just replace this city to be. So city is equal to city dot replace. Now the replace is a string function, string method. So I want to replace this space to be a plus, right? So this will actually replace that uh, all the spaces to plus. So that's done. Now we'll just pass in that city there. Now I believe that's it. Now we'll just return that HTML content. Now in here we'll just uh, receive that HTML content. So I'll just say HTML content is equal to. Now uh, I'll just print the HTML content so that you could of course see what I'm gonna be doing. So there is an error here. That's because of that space. So I'll just print that HTML content. And now if we just start to actually, uh, if we just refresh this page and if we just provide here New York and click submit it actually uh, if we look into the console here you can see uh, I believe response 200 now that's because it's an object right so we, we, we get that 200 ok object now we, in order to get that HTML content we, we just have to say dot text so it will just give you that HTML content now if we just run the uh, that New York again if we just refresh the page now we'll get that uh, HTML content right here. So you can see that it's get printing there. So we, we actually get that HTML content there. So that's perfect. Now instead of just printing this one, we can actually scrape the data. Now that's where the beautiful soup comes in. So I'll just import uh, the BS4. So uh, actually not BS4 itself. So uh, if we go into the beautiful soap documentation, you can see how actually this thing works. So uh, you can just copy and paste. I'll explain in a minute. I'll just copy and paste that stuff there uh, from BS4 import beautiful soup. Now soup equal to beautiful soup. Now the HTML document is actually this one, our HTML content. So I'll just say HTML content and it will just parse by using the default HTML parser. Now we, we just start to scrape things. The first thing you have to look is that we want this region, right? So I'll just right click over here and click on inspect so that you can see the code behind that. So you can see it is a div with, a, with an ID of WOB underscore log, right? So we need to fetch that New York, uh, th this content here, right? So in order to do that, I'll just say, uh, so this is a region, right? So region, I'll put a variable region is equal to the soup, now soup is this variable here, this object, dot find, there is something called find, so I'll just, uh, I already showed you that it is a div, so I'll just say a div, now it has an ID, so we need to provide that ID, as you can see, verb underscore log, so we need to provide that using the attributes, adds here, now this is a dictionary, we'll pass in the key as ID, now the value as this one, just copy and paste the ID from there, just paste that in there and that will actually give you that region. Now if you just print that region, you could of course get that. Now uh, before doing that, I need to actually find the text inside, right? Because we need this text content there, New York and all. So we'll just say dot text. Now if I print the region, uh, you'll get that region there. So if I go back into our application, uh, if we just refresh the New York there, as you can see here, well, actually, if we go to the console, we got that. Hey, we got that New York there. So that's working perfect. Now we got the region. Now the next thing we are interested in here is the time, the, the day and the time. So I'll just inspect. I'll just right click and say inspect. 
and you can see it is again with a div with a with an id of wob underscore dts now the ids may change at the time of watching this video this ids may change but the logic seems to be the same so i'll just say um, uh, another variable so i'll just say uh, this is the uh, the day right day time so for instance i'll say day time so soup dot find the same stuff div with the attributes is equal to uh, we'll pass in an id now we'll just uh, paste the uh, copy this id bob underscore dts and we'll just paste that id there and we'll say dot text now we got the dead time now the next thing we are interested in is here the clear here so i'll just inspect that now you can see it is a span with an id of bob underscore dc so the same procedure again i'll just copy and paste the same thing we'll just say the status for instance and now it is not a div it is a span with an id of verb underscore dc i'll just copy that and we'll just paste that there that's perfect now the last thing we want is the the actually the temperature so i'll just inspect that now you can see that it is uh, a span again with an id of verb underscore tm so i'll just copy this one here i'll just say the temperature so i'll just say temp is equal to the uh, the i'll just uh, copy this id here and i'll just paste that id there so that's perfect now we got every single stuff now we'll just uh, uh, actually make uh, this uh, one uh, we'll we'll just move all these uh, contents to a dictionary so i'll just say a uh, dick uh, maybe uh, uh, i'll say the uh, weather underscore uh, data is equal to we'll just say uh, addict so I'll just make a dictionary and we'll just pass these uh, contents there so uh, actually I can say like weather uh, data of this region here so I'll just make this in, a, in the codes sorry codes now the same procedure here weather data of I'll just make all these steps in codes again now the same procedure again so that's done now the last thing I, I have to do is just pass in those uh, those uh, that dictionary into uh, this sort of uh, context into this uh, HTML so I'll just say uh, the third argument to be uh, weather for example weather and I'll just pass in the weather data there now the weather data uh, it might be none in the, in some cases because uh, if we just go to this uh, page itself then the there is no weather data because we are in this if statement right so we uh, up at the top we'll just say weather uh, data to be none so uh, it will just may get rid of this error there so that's perfect now uh, if we uh, last thing we have to do is just print those values here so at the bottom here uh, and under the form so uh, under the form I'll just print those values so I can just say like uh, I'll put may maybe an h3 tag there and I'll just start to print so before printing I want to actually check if there is weather there so if there is weather which means if we submitted the form then we actually want to print that weather data right so I'll just say end if now inside this one I'll just say weather dot now uh, the we have the region date time and also I'll just say region now I'll just copy and paste those a couple of times there now I'll just uh, say date time and uh, the next thing uh, is I believe the status and temperature right so temperature and the status so uh, if we just look into the output now so if I just refresh the page and if I say like New York then it, it actually gives me that data there so that's working perfectly fine now we'll just give a little bit of margin so uh, we'll just take that form there and we'll just provide a margin bottom to be a 10 pixel and the next thing is I believe yeah, we, we need that Celsius there right so I'll just search for that degree icon there so I'll just say degree icon so which will give you that icon there I'll just pay, copy that one and we'll just paste that here and we'll just say C so if I look uh, if I just refresh the page again you can see that it's nicely looking now 
so uh, that's all about uh, this weather application now the last thing we're missing is if you actually uh, if I go to the home page itself and if I search for New York then that uh, the kind of New York is missing here so it actually goes to that placeholder so we need to retain that data there so in order to do that I'll just provide a value is equal to I'll just say request we have access to that request object so request dot get uh, dot uh, that I believe um, uh, that's the city right so I'll just say request dot get uh, dot city so if I save that and if I just refresh that uh, we actually got that New York there so that's perfect now we can actually check for another so, so I'll just say bye and we'll get that data there so that's working perfectly fine now that's all about uh, the weather application it's actually uh, quite simple to do but uh, it's uh, pretty much uh, interesting to actually scrape the data from Google and all now uh, I have said you I'll, I'll show you some API's that provide the weather uh, 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 data so there is something called open uh, open weather map which has the got that weather API it's actually free but we need to sign up and um, we need to get the API key and all those stuff so uh, you can of course I'll, I'll put the link in the description so that you can refer that now uh, I believe that's it uh, that's about now you can do a lot of uh, things here like uh, validating this one and doing some custom styling and all those stuff that's up to you that's a challenge for you to actually uh, make this beautiful and that's it I believe uh, about uh, this video now uh, if you have any doubts or any errors uh, please let me know in the comment section otherwise if you like the video please hit the thumbs up button and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet please do subscribe my channel and click the bell icon near to it so that's it guys thank you for watching we'll see you in the very next one